Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the Pharisee spirit. The Pharisee spirit is a self-righteous individual who considers themselves to be religiously clean, who, who goes by the book, by the law, and who judges others harshly and severely. But they do this self-righteously. They feel like they have to, they have the right to point out the flaw of everyone else and judge everyone else. So what happens is the Pharisees bring to Jesus a woman who committed adultery. So Jesus asks the Pharisees, and they wanted Jesus to stone the woman. So and this was according to the law that was given by Moses. So Jesus asks the Pharisees. If any one of you, who among you have not sinned? If any one of you have not sinned, stone the woman. So one by one, everyone walked away and left the lady with Jesus alone. So it says in John chapter 8, verse 10, Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. We can see here the judgment of the Pharisees. They're so self-righteous. They don't even recognize Jesus. They don't even recognize the Son of God. They want to be right so bad. They feel the need to want to be right so bad. They so right, they not willing to accept anything else. They just stand on their truth. I'm standing on what I know and you're not true and I don't believe you. That is the Pharisee spirit. Jesus answer, answered them, even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. See, we can see here that the Pharisee spirit judge according to the flesh. They judge by the natural they judge by what they see. They judge the flaws of others. They point out all your wrongs. They consider themselves so self-righteous. They don't even see the wrongs in themselves. They don't even see that them judging. Them judging you is not right. Jesus says you judge according, according to the flesh. I judge no one. As believers. If you really believe in Jesus Christ, if you really believe in God, you are to judge no one. Whether you are a believer or not, we do not have the right to point the finger at someone else and their flaws as if we ourselves are not sinners and have not sinned. Whether we have been set free or not, we have sinned. We are sinners. Yet, so in John chapter 8, verse 16, it says, Yet, even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law, it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, Therefore, where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. See, in this verse right here, Jesus is trying to tell them about God and how God operates. But instead of them trying to listen and try to understand what Jesus is saying, here they are. They still trying to pick an argument. They have got, they got to be right. They refuse to be wrong. They will argue you down to the ground. 
They want to go back and forth. A Pharisee spirit is a great debater. They have to be right. They will not settle for anything else. So Jesus testifies to them about the father. And they says, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. So Jesus is saying, you don't know me and you don't know my father. You do not know who I serve. You don't know, you don't know me. You don't know that I am Jesus, the son of God. And you don't know God either. But here they are in their religious mind and in their religious mindset thinking they know God. But Jesus taught them, you don't know me or you don't know my father. Jesus is telling them right here, you don't know me or my father because you are not doing the works of my father. That's what he was saying. Then these words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him because this because his hour had not yet come. So he said to them again, I am going away and you will seek me and you will die in your sin. Where I am, where I am going, you cannot come. Jesus is telling them right here. I am going away and you will seek me and you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So we see right here a self-righteous person. Believer or not. Where Jesus is going, you cannot come. If you judge others harshly. You are not invited into the kingdom of heaven. He said to them, you are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So Jesus is saying, like, I'm telling you now that you will die in your sins unless you believe. Unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So Jesus is saying, this is our opportunity right here. I am testifying to you about my father and about who I am. But unless you believe and step out of that religious mindset, you will die. You will not be, you will not, you're not coming where I'm coming. Jesus said, you will die in your sins. You will die an eternal death. And be sent to hell for, George, for judging <clears throat> others harshly. And that, you know, that to be right. You just got to be right. So they said to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, just what I have been telling you from the beginning. You ever been trying to tell somebody something? And they're like, right, who are you to say these things? Who are you? And Jesus said to them, just what I have been telling you from the beginning. He's like, my story, my testimony, who I am, I'm not going to change it. Just what I have been telling you from the beginning is who I am. I am he. He said, he goes on to say, I have much to say about you. And much to judge. But he who sent me is true. And I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he had been speaking to them about the father. So Jesus said to them, when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am he. And that I do nothing on my own authority, but, but speak just as the father taught me. Jesus is saying, when you have crucified me and killed me, then you will know that I am he. And he's saying, and you will know that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the father has taught me. Just like us prophets, we are crucified, we are persecuted, we are made out to be liars, we are made out to be crazy, we are made to... Um, be robbers of God. Um, you know, people think we're preaching for money. Just to make this clear on this channel, I do not rob God's 
lot. I do not take from God's children. God is my provider and my sustainer. I don't see a zero penny from doing the works of the Father. But I speak just as the Father has taught me to speak. God gives me his word and I walk in God's authority and God's authority alone. For no fee free of charge just as God has given to me freely and he who sent me is with me he has not left me alone for I always do the things that are pleasing to him as prophets we do the work of God to please God not for material gain not for money I'm speaking for me. I am doing God's work because I have been birthed for this very reason. Not for materialistic gain, but only for the glory of God. That souls may be saved and brung to the kingdom of heaven so that my father, our father, shall be glorified and praised so that his children shall be set free and receive eternal, everlasting life. That is the ultimate goal. As he was saying these things, many believed in him. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. So Jesus is saying, If you believe in me and if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say we, we will become free? They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? So here they are telling him that they are offspring of Abraham. We know that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were chosen men of God who God had blessed greatly to be fruitful and have many children. So they think the Pharisees think just because they are in direct bloodline, just because they are the son, the grandson, the uncle, the brother, the nephew, the niece, you know, the, the daughters, the wife, just because they are related to Abraham, they says, mm, they says they have never been enslaved to anyone. So how is it that you say you will become free? Jesus is trying to set these people free. And they arguing with Jesus. They got all these questions. They going back and forth. The Pharisee spirit. They want to have a great debate. They like, Abraham is our father. We've been free. Well, I have never been a slave to anyone. I'm no slave. I've never been a slave. They think it because they want out there picking cotton. Or working at a master's house. In a natural. Or working for someone else. They saying... I am a son of Abraham. I am a daughter of Abraham. How can you say that I'll be free when I've never been enslaved? <clears throat> Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I so Jesus says, I know that you are the offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. So Jesus is saying, I know that you are the offspring of Abraham, but yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. You don't agree with my word. You don't believe in my word. You do not believe in who I am or what I came for. So you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. Jesus is saying right here to them, 
you are rejecting my message. You are rejecting me. You are rejecting the very son of God. You are rejecting the very spirit of the Lord. But you do not see that and you don't understand. Because my word, my truth finds no place in you because you're so self-righteous. Your mindset, you have to be right. That very spirit. Jesus says, I speak of what I, ha what I have seen with my father. And you do what you have heard from your father. Right here. God is saying, Jesus is saying, I speak of what I have seen with my father. And you do what you have heard from your father. They answer him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you will be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I have heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works of your, you are doing the works your father did. They said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. So here the Pharisees is, arguing with Jesus. And Jesus, I already told them, you don't know me and you don't know my father. So Jesus is telling them down here, you do the works of your father. So let's do the math. If Jesus is from God and they, they, they go down and say, they argue with Jesus. We weren't born to sexual immorality. We're the, uh, Abraham's descendants. So they saying, it is a good thing. They're saying Abraham was married. Abraham had a wife. Abraham, we weren't born to sexual immorality. They're saying we weren't born out of what? Like, I'm no bastard child. They said we have one father, even God. They're saying they believe in God. But they arguing with the very son of God, telling him, judging him harshly, judging him severely, Telling him he not from God. Telling him he's lying. Judging others harshly. Pointing the finger. Trying to put people to death. Seeking to kill Jesus. Wanting Jesus to stone the woman. All the while talking about they believe in God. Whew. This is getting deep, y'all. This is just, this is getting deep right here. Okay, I'm going to do a part two.